welcome back to another week of what's for dinner this week's video is going to be another collab it is with taylor elmore i just love this girl's channel i've been following her for a while now so of course i was really excited when she asked me to do this collab i'm pretty sure that she has been doing what's for dinner videos longer than i have and everything that she cooks is just right up my alley it always looks so delicious and i have saved so many of the recipes that she has shared she also does other things too on her channel like grocery hauls clean with me's and plenty of other things she has a really good variety so if you are not subscribed to Taylor, I'm telling you guys, you are missing out. You really need to go and check her out. There will be a link to her channel in my description box. So definitely go and watch her video after you click out of this one so you can get double the inspiration. On Monday, I made a loaded broccoli and cheese spaghetti squash. I got this idea from Laura Vitale, so I will leave a link to her video in my description box. And through her video is where you will find the written recipe with the exact measurements. So, so far, I have just split my spaghetti squash in half, which is usually a pain, but for some reason, this one wasn't too bad. And then I just took a spoon and I scooped out all of that stringy stuff along with the seeds. And then next, I took some extra virgin olive oil and I just drizzled that all over the insides of the squash. And then I took my hand and I just rubbed it all over over the surface to make sure that everything got covered and then I added my seasoning so I just sprinkled on some salt and some pepper and then I'm going to flip those over cut side down and I'm going to roast those in the oven at 425 for 45 minutes while the squash is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and prep the cheeses and the broccoli that's going to go on the inside. So the cheeses that are used is some diced provolone, cream cheese, and some fresh parmesan. Next, I just added a small amount of olive oil to my skillet and I let that heat up and then I tossed in my minced garlic and just sauteed that for a couple of minutes. She did use an onion in this step, but as a lot of you guys know, I don't like onions, so I just left that out. And then I tossed in my broccoli and I just cooked that to my liking. I do like mine to be a little bit more tender. I did add a lid to the top to kind of help it steam and cook a little better. And I did have to end up adding some water so that my garlic didn't burn. And when it was cooked to my liking, I just removed it from the heat and added my cream cheese on top, popped my lid on, so that the cream cheese could get to room temperature and be easier to stir in here in a little bit. So then I just took a fork and I pulled those strands away from the sides and I just fluffed it up and then I tossed all of that squash into my skillet with the broccoli and the cream cheese and I also added about a half a cup of sour cream followed by all of those cheeses that I cut up and I just stirred all of that together and then I'm going to be stuffing that back into the spaghetti squash and then I'm going to take a slice of provolone cheese, I'm going to break it in half and just place it on the top and then I'm going to pop that back into my oven for about 15 minutes. So this is what it looked like fresh out of the oven. Oh my goodness, this was so, so delicious. I love the flavor that the provolone cheese added. And if you are a cheese lover like me, this is the recipe for you. And the leftovers the next day were just as good. On Tuesday, I made a meatloaf. I always cut this recipe in half, but this is my favorite recipe for meatloaf. So in my bowl, I just have a pound of ground beef and also some crushed Ritz crackers, as well as some ketchup, milk, a beaten egg, some salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. So I just mix that up with my hands, and then I'm going to take a loaf pan and spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm just going to add my meat and kind of pat it down and smooth out the top. And I'm going to pop that in my oven at 350 for 45 minutes. Then I'm going to pull it out. Out, drain off the grease and I'm going to add my glaze. So for the glaze, it's just a mixture of Worcestershire sauce, apricot preserves, ketchup, and some brown sugar. So I just mix all that together and I spread it evenly over the top and then I'm going to pop that back in my oven at 350 for 45 minutes and then it's going to be done. 
I also made some corn on the cob in my Instant Pot. So I just removed the silks and the husk and I placed it on the rack that it comes with and I poured in one cup of water. I placed my top on and I pressure cooked it for three minutes and then did a quick release and it was cooked perfectly. With my meatloaf, I always wait at least 15 minutes before I go to slice it so that it won't fall apart. And as you see, it sliced perfectly. I also made some homemade mashed potatoes and I didn't plan on making the mac and cheese this day, but as I was cleaning my fridge, it fell out and busted, so I kind of had to. But shout out to my friend Lindsay, who was the first to tell me about this Pine and Woman line of food. I had no idea until she told me, and we loved it. I would definitely buy it again. My only complaint was I think it could have used more noodles in the package because it was kind of swimming in the cheese sauce. On Wednesday, I tried a new recipe for a cracked out chicken noodle soup. I have been eyeing this recipe for a while now. It's got a lot of great reviews. So in my Dutch oven, I have a rotisserie chicken that I shredded up, as well as some celery and carrots. For my other ingredients, I have some softened cream cheese, as well as some milk and some ranch seasoning, some thin spaghetti, a big box of chicken broth, and some cream of chicken, some cooked and crumbled bacon, and about one and a half cups of sharp cheddar cheese. <laughs> This recipe was amazing. All four of us loved it. It was definitely our favorite meal of the week. I would even go as far as saying it was our favorite recipe of the year, even though we're just a little in over a month. But still, we found a new favorite. On Thursday, we finished off the leftovers of that chicken noodle soup. And by the next day, it was a lot thicker and it was more like a chicken spaghetti, which I loved. And then for dessert, I had some ricotta cheese in my fridge that I didn't want to go bad. So I made a ricotta cheese pound cake and it was so delicious. I will have this recipe linked in the description box. On a Friday, we just had some good old chili dogs. That's always an easy favorite of Josh and I's. So I did use the Nathan's Beef Franks, and I cooked those in my air fryer. That is my favorite way to cook them, and I just topped them with some chili. So I am just using the canned Hormel kind. That is our favorite variety, and then I shredded up some sharp cheddar cheese to sprinkle on top, and then for the side, I made some sauteed zucchini. So all I did was heat up some olive oil and butter in my skillet and tossed in my sliced zucchini, and I seasoned it with some of that steak and shake seasoning and I just sauteed that until it was tender and that was it so easy and so yummy on Saturday I made some homemade bagels in my air fryer I make these all the time and if you're interested the recipe will be in the description box I just topped that with some bacon and a fried egg and then I also made some cinnamon apples in my instant pot so to make that all I did was take three gala apples and I peeled sliced and cored them once I got that done, I just went ahead and tossed those into my pot. And then I added in one heaping teaspoon of cinnamon as well as one heaping teaspoon of pure maple syrup. And then I also added in a quarter cup of water. And then I'm just gonna give that a quick stir just to make sure that all of the pieces got coated well. And then I'm gonna pop the lid on and I'm gonna pressure cook that for two minutes. And this is what it looked like when it was done. It was so, so easy and they turned out great. I also made some shredded hash browns to go along with the meal, but that wraps up this week. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and don't forget to go and check out Taylor's. It will be linked down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.